Welcome to Narmington, your mountain biking guide to Edmonton. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the trails in the Terwilliger Park, or what I like to call just the dog park, as well as some trails going all the way down past the Anthony Hende into Windermere. But first, as we always do, let's quickly address parking. The lot you're looking at right now is the Terwilliger Park parking lot. I'll go there 9 times out of 10, and if you're looking for a full ride, I recommend going here. But let's say you don't want to do a multi-hour ride and you just want to get to Mustang, there's alternatively this little parking lot, which is just kind of a rundown road, but people park here all the time. And of course, as always, there will be links to the addresses of these parking lots in the description. But now let's talk about the major trails that we'll be addressing, which are the Terwilliger Jumps, Go Trail, Mustang, and Moose Knuckle. But quickly before we get into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss another episode of Narmington. And now with everything out of the way, let's get into the trails, which to start off are actually a bit more complicated than you'd think. There is no real definitive way to get up the hill. There's a ton of different trails that you can kind of meander your way and eventually get up to the jump park, but I'll show you the way that I usually do. So you'll take the entrance that I've shown you right in the parking lot, keep going until you get to a bit of a double track path. And once you've hit that, take a right and go up for a ways, making sure to avoid all little white ferocious dogs because they do have them here. <laughs> And after a bit of mindless climbing, you'll see a single track path branching to the left of the gravel road, which you'll want to take. And while I am referring to these trails just as a way to get to the jump park, they're actually much more than that. They're pretty fun trails. They're not just straight up. There's going to be some down and up. So overall, within themselves, they're actually a decent trail. And this isn't even mentioning what they are like on the way down, because they are absolute blast. But we'll get into that later on in the video. But either way, the trail you just got on is called Lower Corkscrew, and eventually you want to take a right to get onto Upper Corkscrew. And Upper Corkscrew, after momentarily hopping over a double track trail, will get you directly to the jump park. All you got to make sure is that you take a right and then a left and then you will have entered the Terwilliger Jump Park. Now some people are probably thinking, ugh, why does the jump park have to be at the beginning? But I don't know about that. Honestly, I think it's very nice to have this at the beginning because it warms you up for all of the other trails you're about to ride. Especially because this jump park is so diverse. I mean, there's drops, there's step ups, there's just everything you need to be able to warm up no matter your skill level. Not to mention that this jump park seems to always be evolving. Whether it be a couple weeks or a couple months that I go between visiting it, there's something always a little different. So it's kind of exciting to go back and see what's changed. But once you're done fooling around and warming up on the jump park, then you can head down this little trail and take a left, which will put you onto the trail Happy Ending Hill. But don't worry, you won't have to be on this green trail for very long. You just go on it until there's a right hand turn, take that and you'll be on the next trail, which is Dave's Trail. Overall, Dave's Trail is pretty fun. There's no serious climbs or descents. It's pretty much a flat trail that borders the edge of this drop off, which you don't have to worry too much about because there's always going to be bushes or shrubs. And the trail does end with a pretty spectacular view, at least in Edmonton terms. So you got to give some extra bonus points for that and you do get a pretty decent view of the new solar farm they're building which is kind of cool to see as well as a great view of the bridge which you'll eventually make it to so a bit of inspiration for you to make there but overall pretty cool maybe even take some pictures if you're the kind of people that do that then after descending for a little bit you'll find yourself on go trail which is really the meat and potatoes of this entire ride it's not only the longest trail you'll go on today but also one of the most fun because it is very up and down but before we get into that i'll first mention that throughout this trail there are going to be many other paths that branch off which you don't have to worry about because if you look on trail forks all these trails do meet back up on the main trail such as the alternate climb here that i'm showing so it's not something you're going to have to worry about and in fact it's actually kind of nice depending on day to day you can take some little different variation and spice things up but overall go trail is just a very fun blue trail with many descents and climbs it always seems like you're going up and then down not just straight across which is really the nicest thing you can ask for in a mountain bike trail and eventually you will momentarily hop over the gravel path once again which is actually called the golf course trail and i thought i should mention this just in case there's some people in your family maybe they want to go for a little cruiser ride and some people want to go for a mountain bike ride that's something you can certainly do because the mountain bike trail goes along the gravel path almost the entire way as you can see i can even see it from the mountain bike trail so that's definitely something to keep in mind. But now let's talk about who should be riding these trails. Because while they are all blue, I'd say they're pretty difficult blues. And this goes not just for Go Trail, but all the trails you'll be riding on this ride because they're all at a pretty similar difficulty. There's a few different factors that contribute to this trail being a bit more difficult than other blues in the city, but the biggest factor is definitely the terrain and the steepness of it. As I mentioned earlier, this trail is so much fun for more experienced bikers because it is constantly going down and then up and then down and then up. But that is going to make it a bit more difficult for beginners because there are some very steep and challenging climbs as you can see there as well as some tough descents that have lots of roots so it's a little more difficult i certainly think beginners can do it you're just going to have to hop off your bike and walk it a lot more than usual 
Another thing I thought I'd quickly mention is you will come to a crossroads, and if you go down the right trail, you'll go down a trail called Never Too Late, which will lead you back to the gravel, and you'll be missing out on some good trails. So don't take that. And then after that, once you've taken the left, you'll find another crossroads, take another left. So pretty much keep in your head, always go left, and you'll be totally fine. And that will lead you right out to the end of Go Trail onto the pavement. And now that you've reached the pavement, you're gonna take another turn, which you have probably already guessed is yes, another left and then go up just a little bit and then quickly take a right onto Justice Training Loop. Very close to the beginning of Justice Training Loop, you will go past this building and you'll have two options to get down, one of them being Judge Judy and the other being completing Justice Training Loop. Now as for me, I always take Judge Judy down just because it's super fast and gets you to the bottom quick. And honestly, both trails are nothing special. They're both pretty much just ways to get to the bottom, but Justice Loop is gonna be a little bit slower and a bit longer. So honestly, it's all preference. If you wanted to take Justice Loop, by all means, go for it. But like I said, I'm gonna be taking Judge Judy because it's fast and fun. And even if it is rough at the end, I don't care. As long as you get to the pavement, you're good. But either way, you'll hop on the pavement and ride to the bridge where usually a decent amount of people will cross over and go into Cameron Heights and ride those trails, but it appears as though all those trails are gonna be shut down or demolished as they're not even on trail forks anymore. So we'll see what happens there. In the future, I'm probably gonna make a video on it anyway. So that'll be in the top right if I have made one. But that's a topic for the future. As for now, you'll be staying on this side of the river and hopping onto Mustang Access. Or if you wanted to avoid climbing up Mustang and the other trails, you can take a left here and go up the traffic traverse, which will bring you to the head of Mustang and Moose Knuckle. There's really nothing to this trail. It's just to get you around the other ones. It's wide open. It's just hard packed dirt. It's really for people who are too scared to climb, but you didn't hear that from me. You can certainly take it if you want, or you can take Mustang Access by taking a right. Mustang Access isn't obviously an amazing trail either. It's just an access road, but there is a trail that branches off it before Mustang called Quick Snapper. It'll be the second right that you can take while going on the access road, and it is a very short trail but it is extremely fun. That is, if you like jumping. But even if you don't, it is still fun. It's just a very cool kind of like natural terrain obstacle that was created. You can see it's just kind of two divots, and on the last one, you can get a pretty decent amount of air. And another quick little thing to mention is at the end of Quick Snapper, there is a trail called River Ridge that you can go on, and there's a funny little like creek crossing thing, I guess. It's extremely sketchy and weird, but it is fun to do, so I thought I'd include it. And once you're done fooling around at these two little spots, you will hop onto low flow very briefly, but for the small amount you are on it, it is pretty fun. There is a very cool and well-built log bridge, as you can see here, but the main purpose is to get onto Mustang, which you will go up this hill after the log bridge and take a left. Now, if you remember earlier, I called the Go Trail the meat and potatoes of this entire ride, and that is totally true, but that makes Mustang the dessert because everybody arguably likes it more and you're waiting for it and craving for it. Mustang is just such a fun trail. While Mustang is predominantly roads south to north because that's the downhill way, it is still fun to ride up because you're right down by the creek in the bottom of a valley and it's just very nice to soak everything up. But what really makes it fun is the end. This section of Mustang was so good and iconic that they created it its own trail called Mustang Climb. From my experience of riding in Edmonton, I have never rode a hill like this one. It is very difficult, but yet still achievable. And boy, is it long. It really tests your lungs. It's truly something to behold. Okay, see so ya. Yeah. Oh, I almost didn't make it, Rex. And when you're about to finish the oh so difficult climb and you see the end, the trail delivers one final blow with an oftentimes loose incline that has taken the attempts of too many good people. Oh. My legs. My legs. That sucks a lot. But it is all worth the suffering and pain when you finally make it to the top and have vanquished this climb. So to the next person that proves that they actually climbed this with a clip, I will give you a shout out in the next Normington to prove that you too have vanquished this climb. But let's be honest, I'll probably be waiting a while. Most of you guys are in your 30s, so half of you won't make it this far, and the other half will probably have a heart attack on the way up, so I'm not gonna hold my breath. But before everyone gets in an uproar, of course this is a joke. I know a guy in his early 50s who can outclimb me on a fat bike. 
while smoking. So don't worry, I've already been humble. But now that we've talked about climbing up Mustang, we'll briefly talk about the way that most people ride it, which is south to north, and that's gonna be going mostly down. And it is extremely fun, arguably it is more fun. It's very fast and fun and flowy, but it is also pretty rough, but overall, yes, a very fun direction either way. And now after taking your very well-deserved rest after Mustang, you could hop right onto the trailhead of Scoot and Shoot. While I did say earlier that all the trails are going to be a bit more difficult blues, this is probably the one exception because Scoot and Shoot is a very easy, flowy trail. Which, I mean, credit to the trail builders, because this is exactly what a person needs after going through Mustang, especially the climb, so it is very nice, easy flow, but it is welcome. And then after riding on Scoot and Shoot for a little while, you will very briefly hop onto West Point Ravine, which is just a very simple connecting green trail. And then this ride, much like all great things in life, ends with Moose Knuckle, which overall is another very good blue trail. It's a bit more difficult than the last, but hey, you had your break, you can get right back on it. But this trail definitely has some challenging climbs, as you can see here, as well as some pretty fun technical descents, and also a very new drop that they just added that is also very sketchy. Certainly not sketchy because of how it was built, but more so just the landing. It's very steep and loose, and there's two trees. Just overall pretty sketchy, but hey, everything worth doing on a bike is going to be a little sketchy, so just go for it. And right after the drop will be your time to turn around and head back, or maybe the end of your ride, because this is also the alternative parking lot I mentioned in the beginning of the video. So just a few closing things is that pretty much all these trails can be rode either direction and really are fun either direction. It's kind of up to you what you want to do, but especially upper corkscrew and lower corkscrew in the beginning are very fun on the descent. Just a nice way to finish off your ride. And as always, if you wanted to donate to the maintenance and building of new trails in Edmonton, that'll be the Edmonton Mountain Bike Alliance, as well as helping them in their fight against the city, trying to shut down pretty much every trail in Edmonton. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there'll be a link to my video explaining that in the top right. But that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next Narmington episode. I knew you couldn't make it. I can do it. I okay. can do that so okay. easy. Okay, give me a sec. No, there's no way. Don't waste my film. <laughs> I, I can do, do it. it. Oh, you did. Oh, geez. Mm.